Hey folks, what's up? The Ukraine national team made some waves back in 2019, storming into the quarterfinals of the European Championship. And considering that they were just one set away from beating the eventual Eurochamps and making it to the semis, this performance is definitely one for the history books in their country's sports narrative. Then, in 2022, the Ukrainians also showed their medal at the World Championship. They were on the cusp of making it to the semis, but a bit of composure was missing in their match against Slovenia. But today, we're focusing on the captain and star of the team, Ole Plotnitsky. As usual, we'll dive into some fascinating bits of his biography and, of course, discuss the technical nuances of this left-handed outside hitter. So, let's cut to the chase and get rolling. Ole was born on June 5, 1997, in a quaint Ukrainian village named Lipovka, nestled in the Vinitsia region, with a population not exceeding 1500 folks. Both of his parents were pro volleyball players, so it's no shocker that volleyball was in his blood from the get-go. But as Ole himself admits, it wasn't a forced march into volleyball. His folks would have respected any sport he picked. Yet, he chose volleyball. When Ole was just three, his family moved to Vinitsia because his dad got an offer to play for the local club Noveta. That's where Ole started getting hands-on with volleyball. By second grade, he was already training with his dad, playing alongside kids, four to five years his senior. A significant challenge at that age, but it only fueled his love for the sport. What do most 12-year-olds do? There could be a plethora of answers, but for Ole, that age marked the start of his adult life. He was invited to join the Kharkiv Sports School, and after much deliberation, his parents let him venture out on his own. Regular daily practices? What more could one dream of? Maybe just skipping schoolwork. Ole admits that his folks didn't shy away from some tough love for his mischief, shaping him into a more disciplined and focused individual. Surprisingly, he still gets a talking to from his parents for any less than stellar matches, despite having surpassed their own volleyball prowess. No slacking off with them. It was in Kharkiv that his dreams of a pro career really started to take shape. Ole made a name for himself with the city's most prominent club, Lokomotiv Kharkiv, celebrating victories in both seasons he played with them. He also bagged the MVP title in 2017. Not just that, he earned a silver medal at the European Junior Championship with the Ukrainian team and another silver at the Junior World Beach Volleyball Championship with his partner Ilya Kovalyov. Yep, he's been juggling beach volleyball too. Balancing both forms of the sport at a pro level is no small feat. Even when Ole just wanted to chill at home and heal some minor injuries, his body craved for action and off to the beach he would go. Sure, Ukraine's national volleyball team hasn't clinched major victories in adult international competitions yet, but there's a clear upward trend. Their triumph in the Euroleague and making it to the top 8 in the last two European Championships and the World Championships speak volumes. Ukraine had a 14-year hiatus from the Euros and an even longer 24-year gap from the World Championship. A lot of this success can be attributed to the fact that star players often change nationalities to play for other teams. However, Ole has no plans to switch allegiances and dreams of taking his team to the Olympics. Actually, he dreams of getting there with his team, because Plotnitsky firmly believes that no player's individual success is possible without the support of teammates, a view that's hard to argue with. No matter which team he joins, he always strives to be a leader. That's why he's so proud to be the captain of the national team. Time and again, his gameplay and emotions have spurred his teams to turn the tide in matches, be it in the national team, Lokomotiv, Monza or even Perugia. Oh, and by the way, after his stellar performance with the Ukrainian team, Ole was invited to play in Italy's Serie A, a league he'd always dreamed of. His first team in one of the top leagues was Monza. They gradually integrated him into the lineup, initially giving him sporadic playtime, often just for serving or receiving. During the games, he would get fired up, frustrated, but later realized that this approach allowed him to optimally adapt to the new league's pace and intensity. As a result, Ole was frequently named the best player of the match, a significant individual achievement in such a competitive and star-studded league. Naturally, he also yearned for team titles, which he continually strives for with the Ukrainian national team. His successful stint in the European Championship led Ole to Perugia, 
and it all started anew, similar to his time in Monza, as sporadic appearances on the court and a gradual easing into the season, also facilitated by the foreign player limit. He had to compete for a spot directly with Italian player Filippo Lanza. Even when Ole was acing games and practices, sometimes the Italian middle blockers got injured, forcing him to stay benched. But titles came quickly. The Italian Cup and Super Cup were the first trophies for the Ukrainian on Italian soil. Perhaps there could have been more, but the championship was cancelled, as was their potential victory in the Champions League, where Plotnitsky was the standout player for his team in the first quarterfinal match against Fakel. The Euro tournament also remained unfinished. Now, the Ukrainian outside hitter has four Italian Super Cups, one Italian Cup and two Club World Championships under his belt. And in 2023 he clinched the MVP title of the tournament. Currently Ole is an essential part of Perugia's starting lineup, so the absence of Wilfredo Leon on the court doesn't seem like a big issue anymore. Alright, we've covered the biographical aspects, now let's move on to the traditional breakdown of the player's technical aspects and look at his gameplay trends. Before we dive in, I gotta mention Ole's anthropometric data. He stands at 195 cm with a weight around 95 kg. As an outside hitter, he boasts a spike reach of 335 cm and a block height of 315. At least that's what's listed on the Ukrainian national team's website. But looking at those numbers, they seem a bit on the low side to me. Maybe the Ukrainians are just brutally honest with their measurements, unlike most teams that flaunt their maximum touch point instead of the real spike reach. Anyway, let's move on to the breakdown. Let's roll! Since this isn't our first post in this series, we won't dissect every detail, but we'll quickly go over the technique. For those not in the loop, Ole is a lefty playing as an outside hitter. So all you lefties and those dreaming of playing this position, pay attention, because players of this caliber aren't that common. Sure, the title of his airness belongs to Michael Jordan, but watching Plotnitsky play, you might want to bestow that epithet on him too. Not because he's got some supernatural jump or hangs in the air for ages, but for his movement style on the court. Every action is so smooth and fluid that you stop expecting any power in his attacking moves. But volleyball is such a paradoxical sport that the softer your hit, the harder it is for the opponents to handle it. Take for instance this video. If you remove the volleyball net from the frame, you might think Ole's just jogging around the gym. But no, that's his approach for a serve, that's his approach for an attack. Speaking of technique, the Ukrainian's approach is very similar to Yuji Nishida's. Essentially, the same powerful penultimate step. Wide arm swing, a strong torso rotation and powerful jump. And of course, the attack happens at the peak of the jump. Oh, and just like Nishida, Ole also seems to pull his hitting arm out of nowhere. The difference though is that Nishida is significantly more athletic, making all his moves look more powerful. In Plotnitsky's case, as I mentioned earlier, his style is more about grace. As a result, the outside hitter might not match the power in his hits and serves, but this doesn't diminish his technical skills. And as I've talked about gracefulness, take a look at Plotnitsky's approach run preparation. But while everything Nishida does in the warm-up translates directly to his in-game performance, Plotnitsky plays slightly differently. Since he prefers fast balls, he doesn't always achieve the necessary height from the pass, leading to a less than maximum arm extension and sometimes a shorter penultimate step. So it's more about the circumstances than technical flaws. So if you're a left-handed volleyball player, here's a stellar example of technique for you. That's all about mechanics. When it comes to choosing the approach, that's something to consider carefully. The outside hitter almost always approaches perpendicularly to the net, seldom stepping outside the court's boundary lines. Personally, I think Oleg might benefit from approaching at a slight angle. This would allow him to execute line shots more effectively, instead of relying solely on straight attacks and hit sharp diagonals as well. This isn't just a hunch, it's something I've observed in Plotnitsky's gameplay. Like in this instance, where he took a slightly wider approach and comfortably attacked from zone 4 to zone 4. And if you look at the attacker's body mechanics, everything looked spot on. So this approach seemed to suit him well. But again, this is just my assumption. 
Looking at the Ukrainian's attack directions, it's noticeable that he doesn't particularly excel in line shots. You won't often see him attacking from zone 4 to zone 4. His primary attack direction is usually towards the middle of the court. Because Plotnitsky plays fast balls and attacks with his left hand, these maneuvers often yield results. However, it would be beneficial to more effectively use diagonal shots, as he does when attacking from zone 2. But Oleg is still relatively young, so there's plenty of time for him to develop this aspect of his game. In back row attacks, he doesn't often cut angles sharply. But such attacks are significantly harder to block than front row attacks, so this rarely hampers him. Oleg joined Perugia when it was managed by Heinen, whose philosophy was you must get the ball over the net or the team can't win. So I decided to watch matches featuring Plotnitsky in Monza and Lokomotiv to see if Heinen's rule significantly influenced him. It turns out Oleg was already prepared for this. What do I mean? When the outside hitter finds himself in a tricky position or faces a well-formed opponent's block, Oleg prefers to execute a roll shot or a tip instead of risking and trying to hit through the block. It's true that if a tip doesn't score points, at least it allows your team to work on the block or confuses the opponent. Scoring against a triple block isn't very common, so this tactic bears fruit to some extent. When it comes to tips, the Ukrainian has several options. He can lob the ball to the back line in zone 1, tip just over the block along the line, or as a last resort, tip closer to the center of the court. Dwelling too much on blocking technique isn't necessary. It's rare to see a unique blocking style. Let's just note that Oleg is very adept at transferring his hands, sometimes allowing him to make plays even when it seems he can't catch up with the attacker. However, he occasionally tries to resolve all block-related issues by himself, attempting to personally stop the opponent. This can lead to opponents easily playing off his hands or situations where he tries to block the attacker one-on-one, -on -one, ignoring where his middle blockers are, resulting in the ball landing right in the gap. But over the last few seasons, Plotnitsky has been making these mistakes far less frequently. Even if you weren't familiar with this player before, you've probably seen this type of serve. The main difference from the standard execution is the first step. Before tossing the ball, Plotnitsky lifts his right knee and almost simultaneously with his feet landing on the floor, he executes the toss, giving the ball additional inertia. Then, like an athlete doing a triple jump, he pushes off again from the same foot before taking the penultimate and planting step. The Ukrainian, his airness in action. Of course, with maximum risk on power serves, full control isn't possible, so the direction can vary, but there are primary zones. If the toss is good, most balls fly between zones 5 and 6, often a contentious spot for receivers, which is a huge plus. Additionally, the ball flies in a fading trajectory, adding extra difficulty. If Oleg tosses the ball slightly to his right, he has to jump sideways to hit it, often sending the ball straight to zone 1, which, as you can imagine, is also not the most convenient for receivers, especially for the setter, who loses some visibility. One can only envy Oleg Plotnitsky for having the job of his dreams. Such a fanatical approach to professional volleyball is rare. Often volleyball players say in interviews that they try to completely disconnect from the sport in their free time, to rest and recharge. But Plotnitsky is not one of those. Indoor season ended, he goes to play beach volleyball, needs a break from volleyball, he sits down to watch volleyball, maybe even pick up something new for himself. He even watched this review, which was released a few years ago in Russian, after which I even managed to interview him, albeit not without technical problems on my side. Not a single bad word comes to mind about Plotnitsky, an excellent leader, constantly trying to emotionally support his teammates and intimidate opponents. Plus, his emotional gameplay is always a pleasure to watch, even for a neutral spectator. Very diligent in terms of reception. If someone like Leon can just lift the ball and then single-handedly decide the play at the net, Oleg tries to do everything as perfectly as possible, making it easier for himself and confusing the opposing blockers about where to go. So let's wish him more trophies in Italy and Europe and, of course, along with the Ukrainian national team, to finally realize his dream and make it to the Olympics. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review and you'll support it with a like. 
In this episode, I probably did the most active work while studying the player. Also looking forward to your opinions on this outside hitter in the comments below. You write who you'd like to see as the hero of the next episode, but as usual it was Nick. Love what you do and you will surely succeed. See you soon. Bye.